In this video, we're going to look at changing radiator valves, thermostatic and lock shield. So let's get on with it. The first thing I've got to done is I've turned the heating on and I've marked on the side of the radiator here with a pencil cross, which is the flow. So you can see there's a lock shield valve there. And if we go to this side, it's the thermostatic rad valve. So there's about five radiators on this system where they are the wrong way around. So don't assume which way is the flow. Always check it by just turning on your heating and marking the rad. Now, these are the tools I'm going to be using for this job. First of all, I've put an old towel down there to protect the building. Now we've got a tiled floor here, but I'm still putting a towel down just in case we get any excess water. We need a tub to try and catch some water if there is any. We're going to need some polytetrafluoroethylene or PTFE tape or some other kind of jointing compound. We're going to need obviously the radiator bleed key. I've got a couple of adjustable spanners. I've got a pair of water pump pliers. Now I've got a shave hook. The reason why I'm using a shave hook is to get rid of the paint to be able to remove the nuts. And we're going to have to drop the nuts lower than the olives because I'm going to use an olive splitter to take the old olives off because the nuts what are on the old valves won't fit the new ones. And also I've got this ratchet radiator tail remover. There's all kinds of different ones, but I've got this one. So I'll be using that to remove the radiator tails. So that's the tools and equipment I'm going to be needing. Now it's time to turn your boiler off. And on this boiler, we've got an on and off switch. But if you haven't got that on and off switch, you can use the fuse spur to isolate the boiler. Next, we need to find the drain point. Now this could be on the pipework like this one is, or it can actually be on the radiator like this one. Then you need to bleed your radiators, start with the highest ones first and work your way downstairs. While your system is draining, you can take the opportunity to test the water quality that's being drained out. This one has perfectly clear water. But if it's brown or black and mucky, then you'll need to think about cleaning the system as well. Now the heating system is drained, the first thing I need to do is remove these old valves. Now I'm holding against the valve with these water pump pliers to make it easier to undo this tail. Now the valve body is off, I need to now take these tails out using this ratchet tool. Once the tail is out, I need to remove the olive and nut from the old valve body. Let's try and see if I can get the olives off the old fashioned way. So what I'm going to do here is just gently squeeze the olive with my water pump pliers and gently pull upwards. If you try doing this at home, always make sure you keep your face well away from it because you don't want your face full of water pump pliers. I didn't even have to use my fancy olive filter. So that's that side off, let's get the other side off. So just remember when you are taking these valves off, always make sure you protect things like carpets because there will be some water left in there. And if it's a dirty system, it will be black sludgy water. And the best thing to do is always have a wet vac handy. Again, holding against with the water pump players, this will also support the valve, which will protect the pipe from being damaged, especially if it's 10 millimeters. So again, it's time to remove that olive or not. <coughs> this one don't want to come off, so I'll have to use my fancy tool. Now this is an olive cutter, so basically this is just going to split the olive in half when I turn this handle. Now technically you don't have to remove this olive and nut if it fits on the new valve, but my advice will always be replace the nuts and olives. There you go. And it's off. 
It's as simple as that. Now it's time to put the radiator valve tail in. Now I've used PTFE here on the male thread, but you can actually use loads of different jointing compounds on this radiator valve tail. When putting on PTFE, you start at the back of the thread, go clockwise and do about 10 wraps. Now this side of the rad is the flow pipe, so this is where I'm putting the thermostatic rad valve. Now this part can become very fiddly if you've got no play in your pipes like here, but just be careful you don't damage the pipes. Now it's just a matter of tightening the two nuts up and squashing the olives to make it waterproof. Now some plumbers or gas engineers will tell you to use jointing compound on the olives, but if you're using copper olives and they're brand new, there's no need to use any jointing paste. And now it's just exactly the same process on the lock shield valve. Now you may see some videos on Tinterweb showing you how to do this without draining the system down. But if you have never done it before and you haven't got the experience of working with plumbing bits, then my advice to you would be always drain down the system or you may damage the pipe and flood your house. And that's how easy it is to install these two radiator valves. Because we've drained the central heating system, we will need to put some new inhibitor in. Now this can be done in the filter like it is here, or you can just put it into a radiator or a towel rad. Then we'll need to refill the system with the filling loop. You can look at your boiler manufacturer's instructions to help you with this. Then we'll need to bleed the radiators to let the air out and get the water into the radiators. And now once your radiators are full and you start bleeding your radiators on the ground floor and you work your way up then to the highest floor, so the opposite way round of draining, you then pressurise your heating system to between one and one and a half bar. 